So today, the big story is actually hidden behind a couple of different layers I need to peel back. And this really all started with a spark. And that spark was an email that was sent to me by a subscriber where he talks about the things that he's doing, trying to get into crypto and digital assets, and uh, how he's kind of spinning his wheels. So we're going to take a look at uh, this best kept secret. And we're going to take a look at uh, former president New York Stock Exchange talking about different things about digital assets. We're going to take a look at how Paxos is going to become a bank. And finally, we'll finish it all off with Cardano being able to set payments uh, via Shopify or WooCommerce, which I think is actually huge. So we'll take a look at those things, but first take a look at what's going on the market. So today it is uh, April 25th, uh, 10 a.m. Uh, very beautiful day here. And uh, it looks like we are in a sort of a recovery, which is kind of weird because usually on the weekends, you see a bunch of people just dump, especially on Sunday. But uh, hey, we got dumped on uh, Thursday and Friday, which um, I think uh, the big reason was because Joe Biden, President Joe Biden of the United States, came out and said, hey, we're going to start to raise taxes on capital gains from uh, 20% to 39.6%. And then also people showed me some rumors where he was th talking about uh, taxing cryptocurrency by 70%. I'm like, that's stupid. Um, so th that is just rumor, FUD, everything else. And I'm going to dignify that. I also saw, heard a rumor that uh, it's going to be 90% or maybe even 100%. That's how rumors start. They're dumb. So just stick to the facts and uh, I think we'll be okay. So remember, uh, it's it's all what actually can be passed in the Senate uh, and the House of Representatives. So we'll see if that actually goes through. Anyhow, total market cap, 1.88, almost at uh, 1.9 trillion. Take a look at the coins. Uh, Bitcoin, I believe, is actually at above 50,000. So I know people were talking about, well, it's going to go to 45, then 40, then 25. Uh, I mean, if you look at the technicals, sure, I'm not a big TA guy. So, uh, you know, someone in my comment section said, you know what? 70% of the time, it's right every time. And I was like, yeah, that makes about sense. Yeah, uh, yeah, anchor man. So Bitcoin is up 2%, 24 hours, Ethereum's up. I mean, everything's up. It's a pretty great day. And if you bought the dip, congratulations. That's really what it comes down to. You have to really, like Robert Art said over on my Twitter account, he goes, hey, you got to train your brain to look for these red dip days and just say, that's the time I buy it because it is the exact opposite of what's really going on. And that's uh, that's the big stuff. 25% for Terra, man. 17% for pancake swap. Watch out. Uh, X, speaking of watch out, XRP is up 9% for 24 hours. Congratulations. That's looking pretty good. Above a dollar. Now, let's take a look at uh, if you're a big trader, which I am not, what you could look at. This is trade the chain, sentiment analysis, link in the description, all that good stuff. And uh, look at Mithril, Theta Fuel. That nah, makes sense. T Fuel, Skycoin, Storm X, Troy, and Redcoin. And you're looking at uh, with 90% uh, assurance that they're going to go up 6.8, 6.8, 5.8, 3.8, and 3.4. Again, uh, that's all for you traders. All right, so let's jump into, um, really, let's start off with uh, the email. Actually, before I do that, let me just um, start off with, if you've noticed in my comment section, uh, it's been much cleaner now, not as many scammers and spammers. So we did a trial with these guys to reach out to us. It's a brand new uh, company called YouTube Guard. And uh, if you are a YouTuber and want to clean up the space for the scams and spams, because it's impossible to do it by yourself, to take a look at these guys. I get absolutely no compensation uh, for them. This just if you want to sign up and check it out, there is a uh, link in the description. Here's one yesterday for me and mullet. Let me, uh, if you scroll down uh, right here uh, in the red above follow Dan says, do you have a YouTube channel? Here's the website. The code is Dan. You get two weeks for free. And maybe we can start to really clean up this space because it is ridiculous. Uh, it's just awful. So if you look actually in my uh, comment sections, uh, it's looking a lot cleaner than what it was. You just get thumbs up, a uh, couple of replies, and uh, that's it. So check those out. And that's all about if you are uh, a YouTuber. All right. So this was the email that I got. And this is what I was talking about, about peeling back the layers. So the big thing is, guy says, hey, here's my story. He's living in California. Ugh, sorry. And uh, just talks about, you know, I'm in profit. I've saved some money. I got a little bit over 100000 at the moment. It's pretty good. Uh, uh, as you know, I can't invest for a house here in California. <laughs> he says, your last video inspired me. I hate the idea of feeling like a slave while having a nine to five job for a lifetime. I'd like to know your opinion about what else I can do to take it to the next level since current capital is not going to save me from the five to nine job. And that's true. So real quick, uh, what he's talking about is 
a couple of days ago, I put out a, actually, no, it was yesterday. I, I actually created the, the video like three or four days ago, but I uh, scheduled it yesterday. And this was a quick video, about 10 minutes, and it talks about why I created the Digital Asset News channel. And the big thing I talked about was, um, well, first of all, it was boredom. But then I talked about how crypto is really one of those opportunities that, uh, for me, uh, made a lot of sense. And I can't give you financial advice. This is all about my journey and what I'm doing. My goals are not your goals. So uh, when I talk about these things, uh, you have to remember that it's all about you know what I'm doing. Do your own research. I should just be the one of many people that you should uh, take a look at uh, when you uh, continue on your journey for cryptocurrency. And it really does come down to this. I mean, in this day and age, I don't see why more people aren't talking about crypto. I mean, people talk about crypto as a joke. They talk about it as just, just this, some stupid thing that's going to go away. They talk about Dogecoin as like it's for children and toddlers. And uh, in reality, some of it really is because it's horrible uh, investing, quite honestly. Uh, there's nothing really uh, behind it. There's not really a big team. There's not really uh, you know any, any new partnerships. There's, I mean, it's just, it is what it is. And uh, if you invested into it, hey, good for you. I don't care. Um, and you could have made out like a bandit if you bought at the right time and sold at the right time. I'm not a big gambler. I'm just an investor. But if you're looking at for, for some things, like I have 10 x uh, everything, uh, not everything, can't say that, most things in crypto since I started to invest in 2017. And I wrote it up, I wrote it down, and I'm not in the business of losing money. So I just kept dollar cost averaging from 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, and even in 2021. And uh, I don't know where you can go. And some of those, I mean, there's more than 10X. Some are you know, substantial. And to me, I always think to myself, where can I do this? Like, I mean, I have a business, I have businesses, you know, the online and the um, uh, Amazon business and the sports facility and, and, the, and the different properties, but I can't 20, 30 X in five years. Okay. I can't 50 X anywhere. The only place that I can do that is here. So I don't understand why there is such a reluctance to talk about cryptocurrency as and digital assets, as it is an actual viable uh, investment vehicle. I mean, we are changing the tide here, but that is just what I see. And this is the problem. So I'm listening to this, you know, this, this uh, email and this article popped up. A former president of New York Stock Exchange says crypto space is the best kept secret in the world. And the reason I think why they're keeping this, this secret, and here's the thing, we all know about crypto and digital assets because we talk about it all day long. But here's the, here's the rub, is that if you go on the street, and I talk about this all the time, when you talk to somebody who they don't know about Bitcoin, they'll probably know about Dogecoin for, for Pete's sake. I don't understand why. But uh, when you start talking about uh, you know Ethereum and Cardano and StormX and all the different ones that <laughs> I am biased on because I own them, uh, they're like, I don't know what you're talking about. And then if you start talking about you know Bitcoin about why, they're like, oh, that sounds like a good stock. They have, they have no idea. So again, it's the best kept secret that is just out there in plain sight. And I think it's up to us to kind of change the narrative. Anyhow, and this is proof. So Farley, Farley, was the president of New York Stock Exchange Group, which owns the New York Stock Exchange. Great. And he went on to say this, I think the, crisp, the crypto space is amazing right now, notwithstanding the press it's gotten. I think it's the best kept secret in the world and maybe the history of the financial markets. Look, 2021 is going to be a huge year. And doesn't matter about these dips and peaks and valleys. It's going to be huge. And I don't see the bull run is not over um, right now. I just think that's ridiculous. That's my opinion for me. Do your own research. But to me, I see it for a uh, happening for a very long time. Maybe somewhere I think it's going to end between September and then February of 2022. Don't know when that is, but that's just how I see it. And he states, uh, and then moving on, he states DeFi exchanges are doing much of what Coinbase is doing today. And then he says, finally, with regard to the crypto asset class, he said, I think it's fascinating. I think it's here to stay. We're past the point of no return. And I mean, for all these things that this guy's talking about, for the New York stock, I mean, these are traditional finance plays, players. When you take a look at this, you're like, why isn't this really getting the big press that it really should? And why is it that people focus on the, the dumbness of our, of, of our market, like, like the Dogecoin and the irrational investors and the TikTokers who are saying that Dogecoin's going to $1,000? Hint, it's not because you can't have a quadrillion dollars or whatever it's going to be, $20 trillion into, into Dogecoin or whatever it is. 
they just focus on that. And that's the problem with the mainstream media. And that's why you're probably here because you're probably sick of that narrative. And you watch shows like this or shows like uh, Coin Bureau or Alex Mascioli or <laughs> even Alex Becker with his nonsense over there. But, uh, and Crypto Nobs and all those guys, uh, Hashoshi, all the guys that did Digital Day from Crazy for Cryptos, all the guys that I love to watch. Maybe that is it. And I just, again, I just think that uh, if more of this information would get up, would get out, we'd probably be in a much better state because people understand like, hey, this isn't for kids. This is like the next big wave and we should probably get onto it. Anyhow, uh, that's it for that piece. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to the next piece. So next up, I like this one. Um, it's boring. Uh, but it's huge. And when, when, when you get crypto and banks in the same sentence, people are like, they just fall asleep. But this again is proof of how early we are. So PAX has become the latest crypto company to score OCC, the Office of the Comptroller, uh, approval for a bank charter. And what's this is? Brian Brooks' uh, old position. Now he's out. Uh, it states here, Paxos isn't the first crypto firm to receive conditional approval from the OCC. True. Anchorage and Protego, 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 however you say it, both generated, garnered approvals from the bank regulator earlier this year. It is, however, the first to receive acceptance for a so-called de novo application, which allows it to set up an entirely new bank. New bank, a crypto bank, that's big. Ultimately, Paxos plans to operate two trusts by the end of next year, one under a national bank charter, one under a New York bit license, and they have to do this until everything pretty much transfers over. And they, might, they may stay both open, but it really doesn't matter. This is the momentum. I'll get to that in a second. So it says, why a bank? Why a bank? Why go and be a bank for Paxos? You're doing just great partnering up with PayPal and having you know, your, your nice uh, gravy train with biscuit wheels. And he said, look, with a nod from the OCC, Paxos has clear nationwide authority to operate. Nationwide authority. According to Burstein, this means freedom to custody dollars and crypto alike, off-road stablecoin services across the country, and run an exchange on the national level if it so chooses. And remember, this place, Paxos, has a bit license from New York. So all you New Yorkers who get the shaft, well, now you're good to go when you have another exchange, plus a bank, plus you can put your money into it, plus you can pay your, your rent and your different automatic uh, payment processing for your mortgages and everything else, and just whatever you wanna do, and then exchange from dollars to crypto seamlessly. That's the thing. But to fulfill its conditional approval, Paxos has to execute the business plan submitted to the OCC over the next 18 months. So this is the thing. This is how early we are, right? Banks are gonna get blockbustered because they're not gonna go in this direction because they're not innovators. And that's just how it is. You see some banks that actually get it and are on board and the other banks like the HSBCs who are like, you know what, we're not gonna allow you to do this and we're gonna to try to uh, stifle innovation. Good luck with that. So when you have uh, Paxos like this going, you know what, no big deal. We'll become a bank and we'll take crypto and we'll take dollars, we'll take everything else, just like you are used to in your traditional sense and we will bring it over here. Now, some people will say, well, how dare they do that? Because crypto isn't for that, we're gonna self bank. Look. Your goals aren't my goals. Somebody else's goals aren't your goals or my goals. And they need that bridge to kind of get comfortable with what's going on. I don't care how it happens. I do not care. If you want to hold everything on a ledger, you go right ahead. But if somebody else is like, you know what? I need the banks. I'm really, I just want to you know, really get into it. Then I'll understand it later. Sure enough, different strokes for different folks. So in this case, I'm all about it. And especially with me, like, I mean, my businesses, I need a bank. I need a bank to pay everybody because they're not taking Bitcoin yet. So uh, what are you going to do? And he had to finish up. <laughs> One client that's facing this particular choice is PayPal, which partnered with Paxos to roll out crypto features on its planet and subsidiary Venmo's platform through a conditional bit license. As a full bit license holder, Paxos handles the purchase and custody of crypto for PayPal. So again, I think this is very big. If you have Paxos who partnered up with PayPal, and PayPal wants to become that type of bank because PayPal isn't a bank. I mean, you can almost use it, right? But you can't do a lot of different things, especially like uh, business accounts, but almost. So if they have that, it's just that next step. And I think I see the whole plan of why they got into crypto now because they're like, well, we don't just want to make a lot of money. We want to be the next big financial system and wipe out these old legacy systems to bring forth the new one. That's just my thoughts. What do you think in the comments section? Uh, I think it's huge. Uh, again, I try to make it as interesting as possible because banks, people like banks, but that's what I see. Anyhow, let me know and uh, let's move on to our last piece. 
So this one, uh, since we have our own Cardano staking pool and I am super biased on Cardano because I hold it, surprise, uh, people always talk about like, hey, nobody's building on Cardano so far. No one's really doing much with Cardano. All right, you got, you got me. And uh, But no one's really having too much uh, with Cardano. Well, now you can do, uh, you can use that as far as like Cardano, as far as payments on Shopify or WooCommerce, which is pretty great. Now we can do that with PayPal and then when they start to integrate with the merchants, which I think they did in the United States uh, with Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum and Litecoin. Well, now Shopify on the other end, which has, uh, I, I want to say over, gosh, 300 million type of merchants globally. Now you can use Cardano. What's going on? So Crypto Pump Payment Processor Now Payments recently announced it has integrated support for Cardano, which means that their plugins for various e-commerce solutions such as Shopify can now accept Cardano. And this is from uh, Jeremy Fister, project manager at Cardano. He just says, hey, thanks, really appreciate it. Which is like, hey, thanks for integrating us to like, you know, these hundreds of millions of different merchants. Really appreciate that. And it says one of the first merchants to announce was of course uh, Cardano Supreme, which says merch and stuff for that. And I thought it was pretty cool because it's like, well, look at that. You can actually, you know, choose your your currency. It can be, uh, I think it's, I think they have PayPal on regular and now they have Cardano, which makes a lot of sense. Then another one just popped in uh, called Overland of the Americas. And this is pretty much what it looks like. You've got your, your total, you can pay in PayPal. I guess they only have PayPal or now payments. And you can just do it like that. And I was like, what the heck's Overland of the Americans? It's like a it's like a blog post or something like that where they travel across the continental United States, also into uh, Mexico and South America. It's just kind of interesting. So I'm like, hmm, maybe that could be one more case. And again, I know that Ethereum is kicking the tar out of uh, Cardano right now because they don't have smart contracts. But just remember, in August, uh, when the uh, Alonzo, hard, or Alonzo upgrade goes into effect, there's your smart contracts and uh, we will see what happens. I'm a big believer in Cardano. I'm a big believer in Ethereum. I'm a big believer in Avalanche now and uh, Tezos and all the smart contracts platform. And I own them all. And the reason why is because I don't know which one's going to be awesome and which one's just going to be great. So I hedge my bet and uh, we'll see which one wins the war. But I think there's a lot of room for a lot of different uh, segments. Anyhow, that is it for today. So uh, first of all, if you watched that all the way to the end, thanks. Uh, I appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Give it a like. Always helps. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are very time sensitive. And uh, I'll try to do a little bit more live streams later on. Anyhow, that's it for today. Thanks so much. See you on the next one.